Chapter 1 to 4. Who I was is not important. The name that I once bore is now meaningless, but it is important that one does not forget his origins. Therefore, I shall tell you a tale that will help you understand my origin. I was born on a world called Terra at the beginning of the second millennia of the Common Era. I grew up in a modest household with a loving family. I had no brothers or sisters and my parents had long since cut ties with their own parents, so I had no grandparents. It did not bother me at all. Ever since I was able to think for myself, I knew that I was different. I saw things differently, I experienced the world at a different pace than the others of my age. By the time I was enrolled in a kindergarten I was far beyond the mental level of my so-called peers. At first, I tried to integrate with them, to put up a false front for the sake of my loving parents, but it turned out to be too much and it blew up after only a year. It was an unfortunate accident involving a kindergarten teacher and her annoying voice as she tried to make me sing one of those stupid songs. It was difficult to convince my parents and my teachers that I was truly that smart. My parents bless them were normal people with normal jobs. Initially they thought that I was just a bit smarter than my peers and not the genius that I turned out to be. Still it was worth it, if only to escape that annoying place. By the time I was 10 I finished middle school and the whole academic world knew about me and touted me as the next great man of science of the world and honestly, why wouldn't they? I made it no secret that I was fascinated with science and even at 10 years old I had the knowledge and understanding of people twice my age when it came to mathematics and chemistry. After middle school I decided to spend a few years at home with tutors to teach me more esoteric subjects such as engineering and computer programming and hardware creation. It was during that time that I fell in love with the world of anime and the main series of that time, Naruto. At first it was only to indulge in a more childish side of mine, but as time passed and I grew up alongside it I began to wonder more and more about the fundamental mechanics of chakra and all its uses. The way it was used and what limitations would be placed upon it if it were real. I asked questions such as how and why all the while trying to research with my imperfect understanding of the world if such an energy could exist and if it did where I would find it. By the time I was 16 I finished high school and was accepted into MIT. I pushed forward in my research and propelled human understanding of the universe to new heights. All in all, I wasn't all that special. Sure, I could see answers and get ideas faster than most other scientists but most of my early work was more about building on the work that others have left for me. I continued like this until I was 25. Sure, I had some patents and inventions, but those were more for the money than anything else. Even with me building a lot of my own equipment by hand, my research still necessitated an exorbitant amount of money. Still I had results and major success in my research. I could not see it then but looking back now I can clearly see that I was laying the foundation for those that would come after me, filling in the gaps in human understanding of pushing forward bit by bit. New materials for buildings, new fabrics for clothes, stronger alloys that could better resist the stresses they were subjected to. My two greatest creations were the keys that unlocked a new age for Earth. I managed to create a room temperature superconductor. Well, calling it room temperature would be a bit much. It could work fine in room temperature, but its recommended temperature was about 10 degrees Celsius. Still it was a vast improvement upon previous superconductors that had to be submerged in liquid nitrogen to properly function. With this technology it allowed scientists to finally realize a stable fusion generator that would generate power instead of eating it up. My other great creation stemmed from my annoyance at the slow processing power of handheld computers. I felt that it was a hassle to use giant supercomputers even if it was necessary. In my annoyance I created the Fist Photonic Computer Processor. Just like that the world of electronics had a revolution on their hands. Still among all my achievements I never forgot the questions that 10 year old me asked about this fictional power source called chakra. I learned to meditate, and I theorized about it. It was never in the forefront of my mind always hiding beneath the real world and the now that was progressing the world of science. Still it appears that not everyone was happy with progress. The incident happened when I was 29 as I was walking home from the lab. It is rather embarrassing to be honest. As I was passing through an alleyway I was grabbed by several thugs. This was a mugging, that much was obvious, but I didn't have my wallet on me. It was at home and I was hungry. One of the reasons that I took the shortcut through that alleyway was so that I could get home faster so I could get my wallet and go out with my lab mates to eat dinner. When the thugs realized that I had no money, they shot me twice in the chest and left me to die. As I felt my life fading away, all I could think of was that question of chakra that had bugged me for almost 20 years. Is chakra real? I wish I had chakra. When I woke up it was two years later, in a new body and a new world. Being reborn was strange. 
it took me six months to fully adjust to this new world and life. It was the most excruciating time in my existence to be honest, not even dying could top that. Anyways, back to my family. I had a loving mother and what appeared to be an absentee father though by far the biggest change was my brother, Izuku Midoriya. Oh, I should probably mention my name in this world. I am Madara Midoriya and no, that is not a joke and as far as I can remember I don't have any deep-seated trauma involving my younger brother and my best friend's younger brother killing each other or a stupidly convoluted plan to bring about world peace. I honestly think that I cried laugh for an hour after my mother called me by that name. Still, name aside these past six months have been surprisingly fun. I never had that much of a bond with my parents in my previous life because honestly, they were just ordinary people and perfect parents for an ordinary boy. I was not an ordinary boy, not by a long shot. I could not stand mediocrity, one of the main reasons that I was antisocial in my last life. Then there is this aura around my younger brother. I have always had good intuition when it came to this type of figs and after spending more time with him, I found out that he was smart, very smart. Not quite my level and he seemed to have this weird obsession with heroes, but he would still rank at the high end of the intelligence scale. That's another thing about this world that I have yet to mention. There are superpowers here. Honest to God superpowers. It's like a dream come true, 80% of the world has one of these superpowers that they call, quirks. Lame name, maybe but who am I to judge? This euphoria lasted only a few minutes as the implications of these powers existence entered my mind. Back in my original life the amount of power a person could have was determined by the amount of money they had and the political connections they possessed. Here there was the added factor of their quirk which seemed to vary from something as mundane as changing one's hair color at will to being able to punch away entire city blocks. Obviously there had to be a counter for those who abused their powers and so the pro heroes arose to counter the threat of the evil villains. By the time I turned three I had had more than enough of heroes and villains for my brother's rants. Honestly was there nothing else interesting that that child could focus on? Thank god I got through to my helicopter mom to stay out of kindergarten because I think that I would have gone insane if I had to go through that again. After I proved to my mom that I wouldn't kill myself by staying at home all day and that, no, I really didn't need to interact with my peers in order to ensure my full and complete mental development I was finally able to get some peace. Which was summarily shattered by this ball of brashness named Katsuki Bakugu barging into my life with my brother on his heels squealing about how cool he was and trailing behind him like some lovesick puppy. I looked at the two partially in disinterest and partially in exasperation as they barged into my room just as I was in the middle of a study session on the history of the Quirk Society. Who's that Izuku? I asked looking up from the books I had on the floor. This is Kaken. He's my friend and he's the coolest of all the kids at the kindergarten, said Izuku with a cheer before turning to his friend who looked embarrassed, Kaken this is my older brother Madara, finished Izuku puffing up his chest as he said that with all the pride his three-year-old self could muster. I looked at the blonde kid, Kaken. I asked with a mildly surprised expression. He flushed, names Katsuki Bakugu, he said, trying to be gruff and failing. I narrowed my eyes at him and glared. Bakugu stepped back a bit but Izuku was unaffected yeah, I could glare, even if this body made it sort of cute, but I don't have the name of the great badass Madara Uchiha for nothing. A shame that those glares didn't work on that motor mouth brother of mine. Not taking my eyes of Bakugu I said. Izuku go get me something to drink from the fridge. But Kasan said. Replied Izuku fidgeting. Izuku, I said, and he snapped straight. Ah right away Madara and I I, said Izuku then bolted from the room. At least he listened to me. I continued my staring contest with Bakugu as I asserted my dominance over him. Now, Bakugu what did you want to say? I asked sweetly. Um, it's nice to meet you, he finished lamely. That's good. You're learning, now be a good boy and take care of my brother, won't you? I said. Bakugu had broken eye contact and simply nodded his head. He was shaking slightly. I'm here Madara and I I, I brought you juice just like you asked, said Izuku as he bounced in the room smiling. Tanks little brother, now go outside with your friend and play until mom comes back, okay? I said returning the smile. He nodded and dragged Katsuki out of the room. Still I could hear their conversation. You never told me that your brother was this scary, said Katsuki. He's not. He just makes some funny faces at people there's nothing scary about that, replied Izuku. Oh you poor child you have no idea what kind of man I am. True I won't go to the villain's side anytime soon but let's just say that my morality isn't that which you would find in a hero. Even so, I had to find out something that has been bugging me this last year. 
Ever since my awakening I have felt strange, as if there was something else in my body that I have yet to uncover. I am hoping that whatever it is can be discovered with the meditation techniques I learned in my previous life. It was thusly that one day I left the house and went to a secluded area in the nearby park and began meditating. I continued this process for three days, each day searching for this elusive feeling. On the fourth day I allowed my mind to wonder to the question I had in my previous life. Is chakra real? It was then that something clicked inside of me and I gasped as I felt power unlike any other flow through my veins, no not veins but something else. It took me another hour to get a good grip on this power but once I did, I could clearly feel it and I laughed. I had unlocked my chakra, without any training or previous knowledge. Even among this quirked society chakra was a most impressive power even if I never get to the level of monsters such as the Kage or my own namesake. After half an hour of playing around with chakra I began to feel tired and went back home with a grin on my face. I spent the next year studying and training my chakra and growing my reserves. I honestly have no idea where I scale in the amount of chakra but I'm going to wait until I'm at least four and a half before doing anything more strenuous than meditation and chakra control exercises. I was happy. After some time, I was able to walk up walls with my chakra and I showed off to my family. After all I had to do something with this power as I had no intention on hiding it and having a power in this world was viewed as normal. My little family celebrated my quirk and I have to say that it brought me closer to my brother than I had been with anyone in either life. I suppose that it was to be expected, we were twins after all, and we would always be close. However, this happiness would not last long. I showed off my power a few months before turning four, the age at which most kids get their quirks. When mine and Izuka's fourth birthday came, my brother was still without power. I wasn't worried originally since I knew that my brother was never one to be average. However, as time passed my brother still hadn't gained his quirk and I was getting worried. If statistically speaking the average person got their quirks at four then it was understandable to have around about a six month buffer around that age in which most quirks would manifest. There were those that manifested at birth or earlier than the majority, but the more you aged the less likely it would be that you would awaken a quirk. Our family happiness was finally shattered shortly after our fifth birthday when mom took Izuku to the doctor and came back and several hours later with a catatonic Izuku and the dreaded result. My little brother was quirkless. My little brother that had smiles which could light up the room with his contagious happiness was no longer smiling. Was I wrong? I knew that my little brother wasn't destined to be normal from the moment I first laid eyes on him. Was I wrong about his prospects? Is he destined to be a quirkless loser or is he destined for greatness that even I cannot comprehend? No, I can't think like that. Izuku needs me to be there and I will do my duty as his brother. I left my room, where I had retreated after our mom said the devastating news in order to think. I headed for Izuku's room and I stopped at the door as I heard Izuku's question. Can I be a hero like him too, mom? I was ready to console him and say that he could be a hero and not to give up his hope. I'm sorry, Izuku, I'm so sorry, said my mom as she hugged him all the while crying. It was then that for the first time I felt rage, anger and hatred aimed at the person who brought me to life in this world. How dare she destroy my little brother's hope, how dare she crush his dream so easily with her faithlessness, how dare she. I felt my vision clear and the hallway that lit up in the dim light of the computer screen suddenly appeared as if the sun itself was shining from that screen. I could see every crevice and nook in the wooden floor, every imperfection on the wall and I just knew that the image I was seeing in the mirror I had been glaring at would remain imprinted perfectly into my memory for eternity. Toparama Senju said it first. The Sharingan is an expression of one's very soul and the tragedy and trauma it had within. The greater the darkness and trauma of the soul, the greater the Sharingan's power would become. This is what I thought as I stared at my own reflection in the mirror. I had the same build as my brother and usually I had green eyes just a shade darker than his. Now the same eyes were glowing blood red with a single tomo spinning around my pupil. I cut off the flow of chakra to my eyes and the world fell out of phase, became less sharp and I couldn't help but think about the power that I had brought in this world. I always knew that I was not an ordinary person but the power I had the potential of possessing was bought awe-inspiring and terrifying. I cannot coast through life as I have been doing. I knew in the rational part of my brain that I should probably stop my brother from doing something as foolish as attempting to be a hero, but my heart wouldn't let me do it. This left me just one option. Hey, little bro, I called out from the doorway making bot my brother and my mother look at me as I smiled at them, you can be a hero, with or without a quirk and I'll be there to help you every step of the way. I would do whatever I can to support my brother and his dream and if that meant I had to turn my eyes of power upon the world to do it then so be it. 
I will not let our bond break, even if I must go against the whole world to make it so. It began with segregation. Children refused to play with him, they teased him and made fun of the fact that he was corkless. The adults were even worse as they insisted on treating Izuku like some China doll or as an invalid. They say that 20% of the world's population is corkless, but if you were to account for only the children our age that percentage would go down to about 3%. That meant that a corkless person could go his entire life without meeting another like him. Worse were the suppressed reports about the devastating consequences of bullying and discrimination on the corkless. One scientist specializing in statistics published a paper on the deep web saying that less than 60% of corkless children make it past their 10th birthday, dying either due to suicide, some misguided prank or attempt on their part to gain a cork by putting themselves in danger and even straight up murder, most often than not perpetrated by their relatives. It said that 70% of homicides within a family were the result of a mother or father smothering their corkless child. More worryingly, only half of those that made it past their 10th birthday survived past their 15th birthday with most suicides happening a few days after the last high school offering a hero course in the country had finished giving out their admission test results as there were laws against prohibiting the corkless from applying but it was obvious that no school would ever waste a spot on a corkless person. After that they were lucky if they could get a job and most bit the dust one way or another by the time, they turned 30. It's been a little under 200 years since quirks first appeared in the world and most of the quirkless population was aging and dying out. It was a tragedy to face such discrimination, but this is human nature. I have no doubt that when quirks first appeared, they were viewed as some satanic curse by some people and quirk users were experimented on. Now the quirkless are facing the same only that they are considered useless by society and so they are shunned. Darwinism at its finest. It would be ironic if one of the people most dear to me wasn't stuck as a stepping stone for humanity's advancement. I don't want to have to go to my brother's funeral. At first, I tried to stem the tide of aggression against my brother. I walked with him to the kindergarten and I followed him everywhere, beating up kids that were foolish enough to pick on him. It really did wonders for my chakra control as I figured out a way to enhance my physical abilities with chakra and boost my perception to the point that I could easily doge even some teenagers and adults. I had yet to show my Sharingan to the world. My brother resented my actions, that much was clear. At first, he said nothing. Izuku knew that I was doing this only to protect him and it was that desire that fueled my will and ambition to grow more powerful. For that to happen, I needed to ironically, become a hero in this society. I took it to far one time and that night, after I got a half-hearted scolding from mother he came into my room and asked me to stop. He said that I was becoming a villain, that I was going too far. As much as I hate to admit it, he was right. Flashback. What do you mean, stop? Didn't you see that they were about to hurt you? I asked desperately Izuku looked at me with teary eyes. I know. It's just you went too far and I I-san, they were really hurt. A hero should only fight to protect others, that's what All Might said, said Izuku. But I was protecting you. I cried out, hoping to make him understand. I know. But I don't want to be protected if it turns you into a villain, said Izuku I stopped breathing for a moment and looked down at my fists. There were still traces of that kid's blood on my knuckles. I heave a sob. God damn these jeans, this is so unbecoming. Nisan, asked Izuku reaching out towards me I pulled him into a hug, to which my little brother replied instantly. I'm sorry, I whispered, I won't fight again but promise me something, little brother, I felt Izuku nod. Don't ever lose hope in your dream. Whatever anyone tells you, whatever the heroes tell you, never lose hope. Can you promise me that, I whispered, not truly trusting my voice. I promise and I san, came the choked reply that night as I held my crying little brother in my arms, I awoke the second tomo of my Sharingan, one year after I originally activated it. Flashback end. My greatest problem was in fact Bakugu. He gained a strong quirk called explosion which allowed him to secret a nitroglycerin-like substance from his hands and blow it up. True, he couldn't do anything more impressive than a few sparks, but that kid had the will and ambition to make it a powerful weapon. When he found out Izuku was corkless he was somewhat subdued from his original brash nature, but he quickly cut ties with my brother, or at least tried to. Izuku was still clinging to him like a limpet and it was evidently annoying the hell out of Bakugu. At least Bakugu had enough sense not to mess with Izuku beside one small scuffle and some mean words. After that scuffle I, of course, replied in full with a full expenses paid trip to the hospital. He never touched Izuku again even if he still spat out insults left and right. I could tell that he knew I was watching and that he knew I was dangerous. 
By the time I turned 7 I had already tested out of elementary school and was well on my way to test out of middle school. My target was UA. I needed the prestige that came with graduating that school even if for selfish reasons. They wouldn't accept a 10-year-old in their hero course, but it wasn't unheard of for a 14-year-old to be accepted which would put me in the class one year higher than when I would normally have been admitted. I finally managed to pester my mom into giving me martial arts training. Chakra, unlike most strengthening and super strength quirks couldn't compensate for a lack of knowledge in fighting. Its augmentation of a body's strength was subtle and required specialized techniques to use at full capacity. I also began to train my body's endurance. After all, Chakra was formed from yin and yang, energy of the mind and body melding together into one. I also began to use Chakra more extensively. I figured I could leave high-risk techniques like the Eight Gates and Chakra intensive techniques like the Raisingan and Shadow Clones for later, so I dedicated my time to recreating the work of Indra Atsutsuki in developing hand seals and ninjutsu. With the Sharingan at my disposal I have access to its eye of insight and eye of hypnotism and thusly I had access to visual jinjutsu. Once I grow a bit, I could attempt to recreate Tsunade's famous super strength that could put me on par with the likes of All Might in terms of raw punching power, but my chakra control was probably not yet refined enough. Furthermore, I would need to have a comprehensive knowledge of the body in order to handle the recoil of such a technique. Truly, even at this early stage the Sharingan was a blessing. It may not have had the same visual acuity as the Byakugan when it came to seeing chakra but I was able to see enough to recreate the full 12 hand seals by the time I turned 8 and was able to recreate the substitution and transformation techniques as well as develop a sensing technique based on the same scientific understanding that gave humanity radar and sonar by the time I was 9. Still, even with my growing prowess in the martial arts I was far from being able to contest with people who had had more time to grow and develop their abilities. Next on I moved to elemental manipulation which I first delved into when I was 7. First off, I decided to go with fire release. It was a flashy power that made a big bang and was perfect for beginners. It helped that I seemed to have an almost supernatural awareness of chakra inside me, especially now that I had been practicing with it for the better part of 6 years. It was easy enough to get my chakra to burn stuff up, meaning that I probably have a natural affinity for fire, lucky me. Still, I could only work on fire release so many hours in a day since I had to get to a lake deep in the forest surrounding the town and I could only stay there for a maximum of 6 hours each day. I may have skipped normal education through my genius, but I was already planning to take university courses on stuff I hadn't in my past life such as law, social science, economics, and management. Incredibly important stuff if you want to be a successful pro hero. Even so, by the time I was 11 I already had several jutsu under my belt and a complete mastery of fire release. I was working on earth release next and then water release. I had managed to recreate or better said create the following fire style, fire wall, which was relatively low level and low in chakra cost, perfect for area denial. Fire style, explosive mist which was a rather surprising discovery and it worked by unleashing a cloud of embers which could be used as a smokescreen similarly to the hidden mist technique but could also be remotely detonated making it perfect for setting traps. Fire style. Great Fireball is pretty much self-explanatory as well as its bigger cousin Fire Style, Fire Dragon Bullet. These were my, kill the enemy, techniques, or they could be used for demolition purposes. I also developed an offshoot from the Great Fireball which I call Fire Style, Flamethrower. I also learned to coat my hands in Fire Natured Chakra to aid in close combat. I have also developed other techniques such as a variation of the Body Flicker which I call Flash Step. It propels me to quite insane speeds and because I can use it in any limb I wish instead of only in my legs, it grants me a degree of mobility that few in this world possess. I'm still working on some jutsu for my earth style, but I do have some ready. I'm now 13 years old and I'm beginning to ponder greater aspect of my existence in this world as I look over the city from one of its tallest skyscrapers. The view was beautiful as the sun climbed over the horizon. It was early in the morning and quite chilly, but I enjoyed being up here, above the world as it were. Over the years I've kept my hair relatively short, unlike the mess my brother calls hair. Surprisingly enough, it didn't retain the green tint that my brother's hair has. I had dark pants and shoes with a dark green shirt and a black overcoat. I sensed the person coming before I heard their light footsteps on the roof. Eraser head, I greeted the underground hero. Problem child, what are you doing up here at this hour, asked the hero. I met Eraser Head a few months back when I found him bleeding after a fight with one villain or another on the roof I used to frequent to watch the sunset. I took him to the hospital and left. A week later we ran into each other again on another rooftop. My talks with him weren't very deep or enlightening, but they were entertaining, and I think he enjoyed my company somewhat. 
The man was difficult to read. Unsurprisingly considering this was only the tenth time we were meeting like this. Watching the sunrise. It's beautiful up here, you know, I replied. He said nothing as he approached me. I noticed that he shifted into a combat stance. My face remained impassive, but I minutely shifted into my own combat stance. You're good, who trained you, asked the hero. I turned to half face him, not dropping my stance. He looked at me, approvingly. What's it to you? I couldn't help but ask. I could see a minute grin on his face. It's a reasonable question to start a conversation, he replied. I eyed him a bit, flashing my two Tomo Sharingan beneath the Genjutsu I used to hide them. He didn't seem like he was in an attacking stance and he was far enough away that I could make a break for it if he tried anything. Here and there. Honestly I just took what suited me best from a number of different styles and made my own, I replied with a shrug. He seemed surprised. That's impressive for a 12 year old. I'm 13 you jackass. Don't act like you haven't read everything the government already had on me, I replied. Again, he seemed somewhat surprised. How did you know, he asked. I snorted. At least he didn't underestimate my intelligence. Not that big of a find honestly, especially with how you seem to be fishing for information in our previous meetings and should I also mention your terrible stalking tendencies. Now as you know my name, I believe that it's only reasonable that I know your, I replied. He grinned and laughed. I suppose that it was to be expected from one such as yourself, Madara Midoriya. I'm Aizawa Shoda but call me Eraser Head when we're in public, he said. He looked like he wanted to ask something but held himself back. Well, get on with it, ask, I said. What do you want to be when you grow up? You've already destroyed the normal academic system, what's next on your list, he asked. I took my eyes off him and looked down at the school that was next to this building. It was early morning and, there he was, I thought with a smile. I sensed Aizawa come up beside me. Getting a pro hero license, I said. Why? You could do much more with that brain of yours in any other field, such as science or engineering. I bet that support companies would be willing to go to war over you, said Aizawa who appeared to be surprised by my declaration. I want to be able to use my power freely. Being a pro hero is the best course of action to take. Besides, look over there, I said as I pointed to the green haired boy that was running on the sidewalk. A kid? He asked. Not just any kid, my brother. Twin to be precise, I said, and he said nothing ever since he was little, he wanted to be a hero, but he was deemed quirkless at five. From then on everyone started telling him that his dream was impossible. I was the only one to tell him to have hope. That's kind of reckless, don't you think? Hero work is dangerous, without a quirk he could be killed, lectured Aizawa. I sighed. Aizawa was just laying out the facts logically. I couldn't afford to get angry over the truth. I know, I replied. I stayed silent for a moment. Do you know the statistics for hate crimes and discrimination against quirkless people? The unedited version, not the shit the government and media keep trying to sell us, I said. He winched and nodded. I refuse to bury my brother before he even becomes an adult just because society thinks he is useless and keeps trying to break him, I said darkly. That's kind of dark, kid, he replied. I shrugged. We stayed some time in silence. So, any thoughts as to where you're headed for a hero school, asked Aizawa. The UA entrance exam is in three months, isn't it? My birthday is three weeks from now, I reply. Huh, good luck kid. I hope I see you at UA, said Aizawa as he left me on that rooftop. Once I couldn't sense him anymore I body flickered away. The notoriety that comes with being a pro hero could be useful down the line when I begin my research into the depths of science and chakra in order to secure funding. And maybe, once I'm sure that I won't lose my brother because he finally cracked and did something stupid, I can settle down and continue my previous life's work or go see the wonders the world has to offer, who knows. It was time to learn the most iconic jutsu of all, the Rasengan. Abilities so far, fire manipulation, fire style, flame wall, a wall of flame between the user and the target, explosive mist, ash-like mist that obstructs the vision and can be remotely detonated, great fireball, user spits out a big ball of flame, flamethrower, user spits out a continuous jet of flames, fire dragon bullet, a highly compressed flame in the shape of a dragon's head, has increased speed, penetrating power and range compared to the great fireball, replacements technique. Transformation technique body flicker, flash step, upgraded battle usable version of the body flicker a la Shursui style, earth manipulation, earth style, earth wall, 
a wall of earth to protect the user, mobile core, user is able to move massive amounts of earth either downwards or upwards, bedrock shunt, user is able to move massive amounts of earth horizontally, earth destroyer, destroys or pulverize the land beneath the enemy in a specific direction from the user, seismic quake, simulates. An earthquake making the opponent lose his footing, swamp of the underworld, liquefies the soil in an area and then traps the enemies that fall in the resulting mud, earth spikes, forces the earth into spikes in an area. Learning the Raisingan was probably one of the hardest things I've done in my entire life so far. Even with a vivid description of the steps necessary and foreknowledge of how it should look and function it took me all three months until the exam to get a usable product out of it. Honestly, it looks kind of pathetic, being only the size of a tennis ball and somewhat see-through and it's so chakra intensive that I can only do 50 a day before I completely exhaust myself. If I want to truly compete with the powerhouses of this world then I need to up my chakra capacity to at least Kage levels of chakra from the likely low Jonin level that they were at now. And wasn't that a surprise? I honestly didn't think that I would have such a high level of chakra so early in my life. True there were monsters like Kakashi and Itachi who had similar levels of power in their early days, but they were child soldiers. They had to grow up in a dangerous time, in one of the most dangerous, cruel and unforgiving worlds in fiction. Kakashi was a war veteran since he was 5 and Itachi was head of a black ops squad by the time he was 13. I on the other hand was a civilian who lives in a peaceful time and a mostly peaceful world. Which I believe is the reason why my Sharingan has yet to evolve to its 3 Tomo stage despite the training that I put myself through daily. Today was the day of the UA entrance exam. I felt a bit strange to walk among all these happy kids up the hill to the UA campus. Still, it's not too bad. The written part of the exam was laughably easy and now all I must do is make a good showing in the practical portion and I'm in. Apparently, the practical test involved fighting robots. Predictable, but understandable. The school had to differentiate between each student's battle capabilities even if I sensed that something was off about the test when they explained the reason for the 10 pointers. It was a robot bigger and stronger than the rest which would put him as a priority target for those with powerful quirks. This meant that a lot of the powerful quirk students and especially those that have had their ego pumped up by those around them since they got their quirk, asterisk cough asterisk bakugu asterisk cough asterisk, will be going after them with little to no regard for the other students or the other villains. This put a lot of pressure on those with weaker quirks to deal with the lower rabble and protect the flank and rear of the ones attacking the bigger villains. It wasn't that difficult to see that UA wanted something other than raw power in their students, such as a brain or common sense and actual heroic talent, not just mindless destruction. However I have my doubts if it will actually work. The moment the horn sounded I was off through the gate in a flash step, leaving behind me a stunned crowd, an afterimage and the screaming maniac of a radio presenter. I didn't bother with the Genjutsu covering my Sharingan this time. My file said I had a quirk named Energy Manipulation. It was true, somewhat, but I was still unsure if my chakra was a quirk or if it was something else. Hopefully it was something else. Quirks were too well researched for there to have not been someone with an idea about how to shut them off, or even worse, take use of them away. I returned to a relatively normal speed in front of the first three-point robot in my path and smashed through it with a chakra-assisted kick. I was somewhat surprised at how little effort I had to put in to dispose of a robot that was touted as being the strongest of the regulars. I continued my rampage through the training ground as I kept on destroying more and more robots and saving a few people from being caught by a lucky robot or two. In the observation room upstairs, the faculty of UA was looking on in wonder at the black clothed boy who seemed to be teleporting around the training ground, destroying robots and rescuing people without as much as a second thought. There seems to be some good students this year, mused Mizu. Yeah, no kidding. Who is this kid? asked present Mike. A pain in the ass, that's who, replied Eraserhead. You know him? asked Mike surprised. Aizawa grunted a nod but stayed silent. So, what's he like? Come on Aizawa we're all dying to know, said Midnight. Yes, we all would like to know about this wonderful student, said Mizu. Just then the door opened and through it came the gaunt form of All Might, the symbol of peace. Hi everyone, sorry for the wait. So, what did I miss? asked All Might. Nothing much, we were just talking about this kid, said Mike as he pointed at the screen where Madara was currently rescuing a student who had gotten in over his head while simultaneously smashing apart two one-pointers. All Might looked at the video and was impressed with the tenacity and battle prowess the boy showed. If he hadn't just arrived from an incident in which he discovered his successor, that kid would have been on the list. So, who is he? asked All Might. Everyone looked at Aizawa who groaned. Fine, fine. 
Does anyone know the name Madara Midoriya? asked Aizawa. Midoriya? Is he related to young Izuku? thought All Might surprised. Yeah, I do, admitted Power Loader, he's an up-and-coming star in the scientific world. Never went to school, too smart for that. He finished high school at 10 and went on to get five doctorates in different fields. Economics, physics, engineering, quirkology and sociology. On top of that I heard he was certified as a doctor a few months ago. He's already published several articles on physics that have most experts stumped. It's surprising that the kid would even want to be a hero. With that brain of his he could be hailed as the next Einstein. The teachers were impressed at the extensive resume the young one had. That's not all he's good at, said Aizawa. What do you mean, asked All Might. Look at how he moves and fights. He has the skill set of a professional martial artist and a mentality to back it up. See how he never hesitates in a fight, and with that brain of his he can make snap decisions and alterations to his plan. That level of tactical ability is unheard of in most pro heroes, let alone a kid his age, said Aizawa. All Might took some time to watch the video carefully. He could see what Aizawa said was true, the kid didn't fight like an amateur, but like a pro with a couple of years of experience. In a few years he could easily be one of the best hands-to-hand -hand combatants in the world of heroes. Did you ever ask him why he wants to be a hero? asked All Might without thinking. Aizawa looked at him for a bit. Yeah. He said it was to get a hero license so he could use his quirk freely. He also said that his brother's dream was to be a hero and he wanted to get a head start on the hero program to help him out, said Aizawa. What do you mean, a head start? asked Midnight. The kid's 14, same as his twin brother, said Aizawa. This stunned the teachers. Well, that's some dedication. If he's this powerful at 14 imagine what he'll do in a couple of years, said Mike. Aizawa, did you ever ask what his brother's name was? asked All Might. No, but his records show he had a younger twin by the name Izuku Midoriya, said Aizawa as he returned his gaze to the monitors in preparation. The ten pointers were to be unleashed. All Might closed his eyes and sighed. His successor, of just a few hours was Izuku Midoriya, a quirkless boy with a dream to be a hero. There was a possibility that the name was just a coincidence, but that was a long shot. When he had spoken to young Midoriya after he rescued him for the second time the boy had said he was the second person outside his brother to believe in his dream of being a hero. In a way, All Might was relieved that the bond between brothers was so strong and so deep. He hoped that it would stay that way and that this pair of brothers did not share the same fate as all for one and one for all. Meanwhile, I was firing on all cylinders as I tried to rally the other students against the proverbial horde of ten-pointers that were coming at us. I failed. Seriously, where did UA get the funds to build 50 robots the size of a house? Damn it. Hey, you, with the vibration quirk, can you soften the ground a bit? I asked the boy beside me as we were bot panting. The other students had long since fled the front lines, leaving us to deal with this shit. No, I don't think so. Uh, sorry, my quirk has a nasty aftershock effect and I've already used it too much, said the boy. I cursed in my head. Luckily, all the robots were converging on the bigger threat aka me. It seems that I would have no choice but to use Jutsu. I've managed to get by so far relying only on Taijutsu and Chakra Augmentation along with liberal use of Flash Step. Look out! I heard a yell. I turned instantly to look to my left as time slowed for me. A piece of debris was speeding towards me at impossible speed, but somehow, I could keep track of it. In fact, my sight was even better than before. No time to think, if I use a substitution, the debris risk hitting the boy behind me and I'm sure he's not as durable as I am. Without thinking I charged up a Rasengan in my hand and intercepted the debris in a flash step. I panted as I felt the drain on my reserves. The vibration boy was looking at me with wide eyes at the sight of what I just did. No time to think, there was a ten-pointer standing in front of me as it prepared to shoot missiles at me. Blurring through hand seals I unleashed the technique. Fire style great fireball. I spat out a fireball half the size of the ten-pointer aimed straight at his head which exploded in a brilliant show of fireworks, taking out the robot. I turned and glared at the rest of the horde of ten-pointers, my now three Tomo Sharingan spinning wildly. Earth style, mobile core. I roared as I blurred through the hand seals and slammed my hands into the ground. With a great rumbling sound, the ground in front of me split apart in a parodic reenactment of an elevator as the 30 or so remaining 10 pointers went down deeper into the earth. I stopped the technique as I felt they reached a sufficient depth. 
Blurring through hand seals again I slapped my palms once again on the ground and called out. Earth style, bedrock shunt. The wide gap I had just formed was getting smaller as I moved the earth to crush the robots. I released the technique after I heard a satisfying thump signifying that the earthen walls have met one another. A few moments later, the horn sounded to let us know that the test was finished. I fell to my knees in exhaustion, mostly mental, even if there was clear physical exhaustion on me. I still had about a third of my normal chakra reserves, so I was good on that front. I looked behind me at the shocked kid with the vibration quirk. Hey, you okay? I asked. He snapped out and looked at me and nodded. Can you walk? I asked. I think so, he said. He tried to stand but apparently his balance got screwed up. Luckily enough I was near enough to him to help him stand straight. We walked in silence away from the devastation I had just caused. I dropped him off at the infirmary and after a small checkup from recovery girl I was free to go and wait for my acceptance letter. As I walked back home, I turned on my phone and looked at the news feed. Hmm, All Might was seen in town, a sludge villain attacked and was defeated by All Might but not before. I looked at the picture with the defeated sludge villain and there, covered in gunk was my little brother looking at All Might with a starry-eyed expression. What? The? Fuck. Meanwhile, at the Midoriya household, Inko was humming along as she prepared Katsundan for her two boys. Honestly, she couldn't be prouder of her boys. It was true that Madara was the star of the family, but that didn't mean that she didn't love Izuku just as much or maybe a tiny but more than his brother. It wasn't that she didn't love Madara, but he had always been an independent child and so unlike his brother in temperament, always so serious and mature. It was funny until she started feeling like an idiot in the presence of a seven-year-old. Inko smiled as her youngest, Izuku, walked into the kitchen, hair still damp from the shower he had after that dreadful villain attack. Inko was happy to see that he wasn't the same scrawny boy he had been a year ago, even if it was mostly due to his brother dragging him along on his evening jogs around the block and making Izuku do a fitness regimen and diet to get him into shape. Oh, Izuku dear, can you please set the table for your brother when he comes home, said Inko. Nisan is coming home, asked Izuku with wide eyes and a big smile. It was somewhat unfortunate, but Madara wasn't usually home lately since he had been invited half a year ago to enter a research group at Tokyo University and commuting to and from their house and the university would have been very difficult, so he was given a small apartment on the university campus to during the weekdays and the weekends when he is busy. Yes, dear. In fact, he should be here just about dash, said Inko as a cash was heard from the door and said door flew off its hinges and slammed on the wall at the end of the hallway. Now, said Izuku with a giggle. Izuku, they heard Madara roar and practically tackle his younger brother who squeaked and stammered a greeting. After Madara was satisfied that his brother was in one piece and apologies for the door he grabbed Izuku in a hug which was instinctually returned. Don't ever do something so reckless little brother, I said after having finally calmed down and gotten the full story of the villain attack out of Izuku. Sorry, said Izuku, but I could tell he wasn't sorry. So, how was it, hero? I asked with a grin. Izuku blushed but returned the grin with that megawatt smile of his. As I looked at him, I could tell that he was happier than the last time I saw him. Something has happened. As if reading my mind Izuku replied. I met All Might, and I San. He told me that he wanted me to be his successor. He told me that I could be a hero, said Izuku smiling. I was at a loss for words. And so, I did the only thing I could do in this situation. I hugged the life out of my little brother. Damn it Izuku, here I wanted to surprise you and you have to go ahead and pull this sort of shit on me, I could feel tears in my eyes, I'm so proud of you, my little brother, the hero. I could hear Izuku crying now. I didn't really care, I was so happy. Finally, after all this time I would have my little brother back the way he was before he was deemed quirkless. I would no longer have to be worried about his mental state or the damage it sustained from all the bullying. After dinner we spent the whole night talking, just like we used to when we were little, just the two of us. Izuku told me all about One for All, the quirk that would be passed down to him by All Might and how he would meet All Might tomorrow on the dumpster beach. I told him about my UA admission exam and how it happened. At the end of it all we ended up falling asleep in the same bed, something that we hadn't done in quite a while. Izuku used to have nightmares when he was little, and I used to crawl up next to him at night to help him sleep. There was no secret between us. I told him about my Sharingan and Chakra when we were nine. I thought that he might be able to access Chakra as well, but for some reason, even though he has the eight gates, like any other human being for that matter, he still can't use Chakra or even sense its presence. 
I think that I am the only one capable of manipulating chakra in this world. Tomorrow is a new day and soon I'll get to meet All Might. And thank him in person for giving my brother back his smile. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.